We are live. Mm. Okay, so good good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, sorry for the delay. Um, so we are very pleased to welcome you for this Ask Me Anything, uh, and we are very eager to answer to all of your questions. Uh, we will first start by a, a short introduction statement from Richard and Sergey to discuss a bit about the transition we're currently experiment, e experiencing and all of this. And then we will start addressing all of your questions with, of course, Richard, Sergey, but also a lot of uh, other team members from, from Like. So we will actually have Nisha, um, Nisha Nukulin, Igor Samoin, Igor Rumelchev. Um, and Team Zinin, as well, we will be answering your questions. Uh, it, we will most likely not have time to cover all of your questions uh, during this Ask Me Anything uh, that will last one hour. Um, but rest assured that if, if we don't have time to cover everything, uh, we will take any question into account and publish a dedicated uh, blog post to answer all of them. Um, now I will uh, let Richard start this Ask Me Anything. Thank you for joining us. We are. Um, it's good to be able to have the AMA to be, give you an overview of what we're doing. So first, just starting top down, the big vision is to revolutionize financial markets and to build a global marketplace for all asset classes across the board. Key features of that is to have an exchange, have wallet, and to have payment solution. So it's a comprehensive offering. We initially started off by providing a decentralized exchange. Experience showed us that blockchain, today as it exists, even with off-chain settlement, is not scalable as we initially hoped. So that meant at the end of the last year, we moved to a centralized version. But important, the big vision is to come back to that and implement a decentralized. But as it turns out, the centralized and decentralized solution of an exchange, in a sense, belong together because in a centralized exchange, it's easier to provide liquidity because the coins which the market makers offer don't have to be already there in the, their inventory, but they can actually hedge their inventory on based on demand and supply. So where we are now. So key for Luke is to become a really agile company. And the delays which you have seen in some of our releases or in the rollout of our products is due to the fact that we have been in an experimental explorative phase. And now what we're doing is consolidation across the board. So let me explain. So key is for us, the core of Luke, to create an agile company. What does that mean? Mika, can you just show the slide which kind of gives us an overview of what we have? So we want to differentiate between the core functions and then separately to the market making functions and functions across the board. So if you see the organizational design, you have an enterprise, finance, and risk and security section. These are centralized functions which happen across the board. Then there is a marketing section which looks at the different types of products that we have on offer. And then further to the right, the individual products, the products, and subsequently the engineering team. And then further to the right, the people who actually bring it to the market. And at the very end, it's the kind of regulatory entities which bring it to the market in the local entities. So it's transforming the company into a structured cell-based structure, but which has a clear design to ensure fast delivery. So let me go through the things. So marketing, where does it start? Key to any marketing is good research. So Based on the overall strategy which we're implementing, we want to focus on individual sections and imp 
integrate the products and according to the demands and wishes of the individual people. Key in our strategy is there is to follow a high touch approach to be able to provide excellent user service and respond to the specific demands which you have. And I'm very grateful for all your feedback on the Telegram channels and other channels. So the input which you give us are kind of very valuable to us. So where are we, do we stand today from a regulatory point of view? In Cyprus, we have been granted the CIF license and now we're waiting to just get the final approval based on the actually going live. The EMI license, which is the money transmitter license, is also pending. We hope to get that in the second quarter. Then the OTF license in Switzerland is has been submitted, but as is typical with regulators, it is not fast. We hope to go live in the third quarter. That's our expectation. Now, many questions ask, where do we stand in the US? There, I have to say, it's really unfortunate that we have not made progress. This is on our to-do list, and we're exploring different alternatives to move forward. In Asia, the same. We have not, at this stage, any clear licenses, which we have, are close to, but we are in negotiations. Apart from what we have done in the least uh, last month, is also to manage the flow on our side is we have seen that a lot of people just come and buy the Bitcoin on our exchange and, the, and because we have been funding the fees for the credit card transfers, we have now implemented fees for people who make payments through credit cards. We stay clear in terms of all wallet users have free service. What we're doing is on the exchange side is for traders trading over the API or over the web terminal, there are fees. Now, you might ask, why are we doing it? Because actually, if we have the right fee incentive on the exchange side, that allows us to implement affiliate programs, which are key, because that will help us to attract liquidity. One of the key issues which we today face, that is, we are now at last rapidly expanding the number of coins, utility tokens, which are available. But the next important step is to provide liquidity. To provide liquidity, there are two steps. On the one hand, to nurture market makers, and there are many of them, to come on board and provide liquidity. But very important for us is we have the so-called alpha engine, which is this financial engineering, which I've been involved in for many years, which provides liquidity and, I'll hope, that within the coming six to eight weeks, you'll see a massive improvement thanks to the Alpha engine which is being deployed, which allows us to carefully risk manage the liquidity that we offer. So what are the key topics which we have to uh, focus on in terms of delivery? Continued expansion of token coverage, integrated wallet experience. Second is payment solutions. But key of all is to have ample of liquidity. So what are the other things that we're going on? So as we speak, we're, I'm raising capital for the company. I'm also focusing on making sure that we have a very agile organization so that we'll aim for profitability at the latest end of this year or preferably by mid-year. So that's just a brief update and looking forward to answering your questions. Sergey. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, I'll be uh, glad to guide you through the uh, current traction of Leaky. So where do we stand in terms of the user adoption and the metrics? Let me share my screen to um, show the actually the, the metrics. So, um, uh, at the moment, at the end of January, we have around uh, 72,000 of registered clients. And by end of February, it's, it's, it's now close to 80,000. Approximately like 23% uh, of them go through the KYC process. 
And uh, KYC process now really uh, smooth and fast. We onboard people on average like on 30 minutes uh, uh, after they actually um, uh, approach to onboarding. Uh, the average month on month growth rate uh, for the last year was around 20%. So we we think, I mean, there was some kind of waves of this when we uh, introduced Ethereum uh, and when there was a kind of end of year hype. We think there will be kind of a normalized growth of around 15 to like to 20% during the course of this year as well, which will uh, allow us to achieve the target of uh, 500,000 of registered uh, clients and uh, 120,000 of clients which went through the KYC process, which are essentially trading most of the volume. If you look at the breakdown of the user base, <coughs> where do they come from? They actually come from all over the world. Is 140 countries overall, but half of them are actually from Europe and uh, Switzerland and UK, uh, and 10% uh, come from from Asia and uh, only 3% from US and Canada, which actually gives us uh, opportunity, a room for growth in these areas. I mean, US and Asia are actually by far the largest markets in for crypto and you know forex as well. So with our um, you know, new strategy and marketing. Uh, capabilities will be able to, you know, uh, uh, expand to those regions. Mm. Uh, for our daily activity, uh, it's uh, if you look at the kind of uh, monthly and daily active users. By active, we mean the, that at least has one trade uh, per per the period. We had around 8,200 8, monthly active users in January, and on average is around uh, 900 per day. And we target that this number can actually can be uh, a 10x, so it could be like a 12, at least 12,000 daily active users by end of uh, this year, uh, which overall will allow us to reach the target of 100 million per day of the volume. So uh, this is non-leveraged volume, which comes from the spot trading, and this, uh, th those are actually the, the time series of the graph of you know, the trading volume of the last year and the beginning of this year. On average, we had like 1.4 million daily volume per and, and during the last year, and uh, the, the, actually in, in January it was around 5 million per day. But in February we see some some of a, a decline in the volumes. Uh, we actually we uh, uh, think it's actually linked with overall kind of a cooling down of, of the crypto market, and uh, there is a certain kind of uh, less hype and more uh, you know. Uh, uh, less user activity uh, uh, condition to the to the uh, fast growth of the cryptocurrencies. Um, if you break down this volume by by the clients' activity, for example, in January we see that there is a a large you know uh, 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 like eighty percent of the clients are essentially below ten thousand dollar volume, so they are middle and small clients, and the typical client is trading like around two thousand dollar per actually per uh, per month and uh, but 20 percent are on the on this right tail and they should generate most of the volume they generate essentially 90 percent of the volume on the on the exchange uh, with the largest one generating up to 20 million or more uh, and those are essentially our uh, api accounts those the hfts the algos which are trading through the api and, uh, and if you further segment it by, by the frequency of the activity and the uh, size of their you know, uh, trading volume, uh, you see that you know, there is a lot of kind of irregular and small and medium clients. And there is uh, regular clients which trade like uh, hundred or thousand you know, trades per week. So actually essentially actively trading intraday. And, they, and on top of that, there are algo traders, those who trade the, through APIs, those are robots. And uh, interesting to look at the, those uh, segments in terms of the volume in terms of number of trades. Of course, the, the algos, the large algos, they generate most of the traffic on the exchange. They generate essentially 70% of the trades, like trade events, but only generate 30% of the volume. 40% of the volume are generated by regular clients who trade, you know, intraday, and uh, most of them are medium and large size. So they trade, you know, uh, 10 or 100K per, uh, per week or more. 
But there is a large segment of small and irregular clients, like 40%, more than 40% are just doing, you know, a couple of trades per month, less than a, a thousand. But they are kind of a, a, a growth base because those clients may be just trying the exchange and they can grow into the regular clients and can start to generate a volume for, for exchange. And we will target the kind of retention program to, you know, make them more involved and, you know, uh, focus on, on their uh, like quality of service for, for them as well to become a regular and uh, large clients. Uh, speaking about our performance last year, most of, of our revenue actually comes from the trading activity of our market making uh, algorithms. And uh, throughout the course of last year, the realized trading panel was close to 3 million, which is essentially uh, a panel from the you know, in the spread. And the total panel was close to 5.4 million, which implies the also revelation of the inventory. So uh, of course, due to the Bitcoin increase and you know, we have an exposure to the cryptocurrency, uh, this creates an additional uh, uh, unrealized profits uh, because of revelation of the inventory. But these profits are, of course, they are subject to the market risk. And now Bitcoin is, uh, yeah, is rebounding back uh, to, to the, uh, like around uh, eight, 9,000 per, per one Bitcoin. So the whole um, inventory will be revelating this, this number. Um, as we switched, as Irishan mentioned, we switched to the centralized model uh, for, and we essentially, you know, the good side of it, we stopped paying the, the settlement fees for on the on the on the blockchain every time there is a trade, or there is a channel reopening, and uh, on average we now spend less than 0.1 Bitcoin in total for blockchain fees for settlement. Uh, they are only settled when the client actually orders the. Uh, uh, delivery of the bitcoins or ethers, so it's 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 now really uh, minuscule uh, cost uh, cost. But I mean, those were large costs by end of last year, but now we essentially mitigated it. Um, to to f uh, to explain what we are going to be really focused on the coming period, um, those will be as I mean, of course, it's a liquid wallet, which is our core product, a flagship product which will be even more, uh, make more easy to, to, you know, to use. We'll add some additional payment functions to it. So it will be like a, like really like a wallet, which is, which is easy to use. And uh, for the, uh, even for the persons, people who are not tax savvy, who are just, you know, normal people um, uh, like moms and dads. Um, and at the same time, we'll uh, really focus as well on the leak exchange as a product which consists of the web terminal, which allows for, for you know, active traders to, you know, to use the, the web interface to trade. The trading API, which is the uh, direct market access to the uh, uh, machine interface and the Algo store, which is a, a set of tools to collocate the algorithms uh, close to the machine engine and the core of the exchange. And uh, the affiliate program will uh, uh, we'll explain it later. It will be kind of our way to, to um, really multiply and facilitate the trading on, on leak exchange. Margin trading is, uh, it's, I mean, this year probably will be the year of the margin trading because it's now live and it's, uh, it's run on a limited basis uh, from our you know, Asian license, but uh, we're, uh, by you know, receiving the European license in Cyprus, we'll be able to offer this margin trading uh, across the, uh, all the European states. And this is really a profitable project uh, and uh, uh, by far, we expect that there's going to be a stable revenue stream for, for Leaky uh, going forward. Leaky Card will uh, relaunch Leaky Card, and Igor will explain later. We already signed uh, uh, two partner agreements with the card program providers, and uh, uh, will not give any estimates of the days, but it's something we're closely working on now. Hopefully, it will be resulting uh, uh, sooner. Uh, Leaky Pay also will explain where we are here. Uh, we already have the first uh, transactions for the Liki Pay uh, product. It's, uh, it's it can be a promising way to you know to expand to the payment space and get the you know B two B payments, B two C, and all this uh, 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 large market of, of the payments in fiat and crypto. Uh, liquidity here is number six. Essentially, is uh, one of our core uh, issue, and you know we are working right now. As Richard mentioned, it's it's both it's Alpha Engine, which is will be the self you know uh, prop market making on Liki, but it's also 
external market makers that we will you know incentivize and with affiliate program and we also build the bridges for the other trading platforms uh, for example, Lick is now available on Top Trader, which is an application with around 1 million users who are trading through the Android app. And Lick is there available as a, as a, as a venue. We will make a bridge to the trading view with 1 million you know, daily users uh, on the trading view and some other platforms which are used mostly also by institutional clients. So uh, liquidity is really you know, the focus of you know, the next coming months. Uh, financial products, in, uh, this is where the innovation goes. And uh, in addition to the, uh, you know, traditional crypto instruments, we'll provide uh, uh, derivative instruments like uh, indices, like volatility indices and uh, baskets and uh, as well as uh, other derivatives. So there is a team working on this uh, using the financial kind of engineering skills. And the open API is, you know, is our strategy to become, you know, to, to, to actually to be the open company, open source, open knowledge, and the interface for the other, you know, uh, other entities and other, you know, ecosystem uh, members will be this open API, uh, which will allow to connect directly to the, to the exchange and use the services for, you know, payments for, for trading, for conversion of uh, cryptocurrencies. And uh, we're going to develop this uh, to, plugging into the ecosystem of, you know, of, of uh, for our neighbors. And uh, whatever is not in this list will be nurtured in the Leaky Labs. So the R&D and magic goes there. Uh, so hopefully it will be new innovative products which you cannot imagine right now. Uh, so that's basically all for now. And uh, we, 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 we can now go into the, into the uh, Q&A session. Okay, so um, we will start um, with the first question. We will first use uh, the question from the Google Doc uh, and also a question that were asked on Reddit. And like I said, if you ask any question in the YouTube chat, um, we will address them in a dedicated blog post because most likely we won't have time um, to cover them during, during this session. So first question, um, Lique has always tried to get really regulated at time, nobody cared for regulation. It's one of the reasons why Lique slowed down its progress on development. Will now Lique have a better position against other exchange? Richard? I wish it were the case. The space is changing rapidly. So clear we have a competitive edge by being a legitimate player because we're putting a lot of emphasis on that. But at the same time, we're in a space that is expanding and suddenly other players who have a lot of more capital come in and challenge the position by buying big entities which already have regulatory wrappers. So therefore, it's very important for us to be very agile in uh, responding to that challenge. And this is why the focus is to get the core product up and running and really earn tons of money so that we can have the muscle to get the regulatory wrappers. So that's a long answer. Thank Thanks. you. Um, so next question. What is and will be unique about Lique to have an advantage in competition? We don't have the semi-decentralized mode anymore and other financial products are not inside. When will we go back to semi-decentralized mode? And will we, when will we further um, introduce financial product, Richard, as well. So it's very important at this stage to be very focused. So short-term goal is to get liquidity for the major uh, cryptos, utility tokens. That's the core focus. As soon as we have that, we go step by step further, and in the sense of revisiting the decentralized exchange, and in my view, actually a centralized and decentralized exchange belong together and depend on who the end user is, he will either prefer the decentralized version or the centralized. So we are, have the opinion that actually we're well positioned to take on the challenge, but it's really the focus on the short term, which is essential. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next question also for you. Um, it's about LKK. How is our money being invested? We'd like to have breakdowns. Okay, so 
key to that is um, first we have HR costs which account uh, basically for 75 percent then licenses cloud service is 13 percent and then 12 percent of our cost base is rent legal service etc so key is HR costs and that's spent on a team across the board across the world thanks thank you uh, next question is for Sergey. How many staff does Lique have? What is the breakdown of developers versus sales? What are the salaries? What, uh, what salaries in LKK do employees get? How many work remotely? Yeah, thanks for the question. Actually, it's in total, uh, currently we have around 140 staff, which are both part-time and full-time employees. 70% um, of them are you know, actually working on products, they're developers or uh, you know, testers or working in the operations uh, for this uh, for Liki, uh, wallet and Liki exchange. Uh, Thirty percent are in sales. Uh, the average salary is and Liki is, is around. It's almost four thousand USD per per month, and uh, most of this is paid in cash, and only like 15 percent is paid in LKK as a, as a bonus part. Uh, so essentially, our most of our uh, uh, team members are also Liki coin holders and owners of the company. Uh, about the remote work, we are very decentralized. Probably more than twenty countries where people are are in, and most of them are working remotely. Like probably more than ninety percent. So essentially, we have you know very few offices. In, in when the main one is in Zug in Switzerland. Thank you. Uh, next question is for Tim and Misha. Lika introduced commission for withdrawal and cashing at last. The website says commission structure may change, that maybe rebates will be introduced. What are the plans? How will it help you earn money and drive liquidity? And also, on a side question, how do you justify fee from generating to private wallet when you advertise as an integrated exchange and wallet? Uh, actually, the plan is to introduce uh, uh, the way to make your fees for, for trading, uh, uh, which would be linked to the Elasco spread. And uh, we also are planning to introduce take your fees linked to the uh, trading volume. Uh, another point is we want to share those fees, we want to share up to fees to referrals that play a program. And regarding the, uh, the plan to support all the private wallets for, um, for all traded coins, um, but blockchains uh, fees are, are to be paid by users. And probably the team could add uh, some details on the uh, affiliate program. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tim and cover, I'm covering marketing for Lika. So um, we want to share uh, with our users the opportunity to earn uh, not only on a cryptocurrencies trading, but um, also on attracting new users to our ecosystem. So uh, we built a unique on its offer affiliate program. Uh, right now, Lika is the only one player in the market offering up to 50% for each attracted user. So to take advantage of the opportunity to start earning with uh, Liki, you will need to find an uh, affiliate section in the uh, Liki web wallet, which could be accessed through uh, our main page. Uh, the program has a very simple interface uh, of two pages. It's uh, basically a user agreement and uh, a personal page with uh, basic data of uh, uh, partner's revenue share. Uh, the main work uh, of uh, our affiliate program was already completed, and we are now uh, waiting for its launch, and it uh, probably will happen in the next week. Uh, and uh, in, in, a, in the near future, we will organize a separate AMA session to answer questions about the, the affiliate program. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we couldn't hear Misha very well, but uh, 
like we said, we will uh, create a dedicated blog post with answer to all of the question. And we will also include a short answer uh, to also the question we covered in, uh, in the YouTube session. So his answer will also be written down in the blog post. So next question. The LKK two year sales, big slot, big lots sold, were sold off during the sales. And I think it was mentioned that at the time it was institution, institutional purchase. Can we know the buyer? Is there any transparency to allay fears that this wasn't fixed in some way, Richard? So actually it was no institution. We had largely private individuals who bought, bought it. The biggest one was a ticket for two million. And he's also a private individual who himself is, however, building a business in uh, blockchain related and actually will have an interesting product out running by the end of the year, which will build on the Lookit um, uh, platform. Thanks. Thank you. So uh, next question is for Sergey. I would like to see Lique token on other exchange. Don't you think this is a good idea? <clears throat> this actually is, is a good idea. It's also on our roadmap to, to, to be implemented. Uh, the, the kind of the problem was that with Lique is when we launched the token, the LKK, it was designed as a security token. So it has the rights to, to, you know, to receive dividends and, you know, have a share of the company and, uh, to be have a voting power, <clears throat> so it's it's uh, it's now it's kind of problematic to to list the security token on the crypto crypto exchanges. So we are now in the process of designing uh, uh, LKT, uh, the Liki utility token, which will be a utility reward token can can be used in Liki ecosystem, and uh, by having this utility token not linked with security. It will be possible to list on, on the other exchanges across the globe. And this will be one of our kind of major marketing tool going forward. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Next question. Um, so what is your strategy for further Lique wallet development? When could we get more detail about web trading terminal and Lique payment? It's for Misha and Igor. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mark. So, so we are receiving complaints and suggestions regarding the interface of Liquid Wallet from our Liquid users. So now we are working on the improvements of the user interface. And we are going to make it more user friendly for storing and trading the assets. Also, we are going to connect Liquid Wallet to Liquid Pay and introduce the payment features. As for Liquid Pay, this year we launched Liquid Pay investing portal that can be used by our corporate clients for investing their customers in fiat currencies and receive payments in any crypto supported Liki exchange with the immediate exchange to an asset of choice and settlement to the corporate client's bank accounts. Last week, as Sergey said, we successfully executed the first payment. We continue working on that can be used by different POC systems, ATMs, and e-commerce plugins. So for example, recently we released such plugin for WooCommerce, a popular e-commerce system. Uh, regarding the web terminal, Bisha, would you like to jump in here and provide some update on this? Yeah, actually, uh, our uh, major sh uh, short-term priority is to deliver uh, web-based services. So now we are building uh, uh, the web flow from the registration and KYC to depositing and trading. So uh, web terminal is currently is in beta testing mode and it's uh, currently available for beta testers only. And uh, we actually rely on our beta testers opinion. Uh, so we decide, so they decide when we are ready to run the web terminal live. And at the same time, anyone is welcome to join the beta testing. Just uh, let us know in the developer chat uh, in Telegram. Thank you, Misha. Uh, next question is also for you. Is the scaling problem of Bitcoin and Ethereum persist? Would you consider to look into a new emerging platform like Radex? Its scalability is second to none while still being decentralized and public and fair. Important project. Please have a look. What about your plan to use Ashgraph? Uh, well, uh, switching back to decentralized stuff is not in our short-term focus and priority, but even though we believe it's uh, one of the uh, 
and most safe approach that may guarantee 100% safety of both client farms. So uh, according to our liquid 0 0.02 uh, strategy, we focus on the core functions, exchange first, and um, liquidity and the sustainable. So at the same time, we are considering virus blockchains on the background. So thank you for pointing us to the project. And uh, for us, um, the main challenge for uh, for distributed ledgers is uh, to have the uh, decentralized bridge to other blockchains injected into chosen uh, ledger. So, uh, for instance, we are considering our chain as the most feasible plan. So, regarding health graph, recently we ran a uh, competition for testing the performance and uh, discovered that health graph is not scalable in, number of, in terms of number of nodes um, and also false source. Yeah, this is the answer. Thank you. Next question is for Richard. Why market valuation of LKK solo at the moment? Does investors think Lique is underperforming? Um, how can you improve uh, Lique exchange with your knowledge and experience from financial market and with all the talent in Lique team? I've read somewhere that Lique is, second, is the second biggest company by team member in all crypto world. Richard? So, agreed. And we have to be perfectly frank, we have underperformed. There is no doubt about that. The, Thing is, we're currently in the consolidation phase, and actually, it's all about getting the small missing links together to make it smoothly operational. So, yes, we're punished today, but I guess that very soon, actually, the concrete progress of having real deliverables will convince people of the huge scope and business potential that we have. The other thing is which you have to keep in mind mm. that because we're a security token, we're not freely listed on other exchanges, which actually diminishes the and reduces the number of people who can buy Luke at this stage. But this is on the reverse a big potential of the uh, the token because it's backed by a real share of a company. So yes, it's all about work and getting the core things functional. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is for Igor Rumyanchev. Um, are you considering integrating uh, new KYC possibilities as soon as possible, like Civic or SelfKey? Uh, thanks, Maud. Yeah, my name is Igor, uh, and I'm overseeing uh, all the things which are related to KYC and uh, Leaky Cards program. So, yeah, we are constantly working on, on the improvement of our KYC flow from the back end as well as from user experience perspectives. And we try to automate as much as we can to provide streamlined and scalable QVC solution. We have already implemented a few steps for ID and selfie verifications and sanctions and criminal tracks, records checks, etc. And uh, at the moment, uh, the proof of address is the biggest time meter for QVC uh, team. And we're looking for the proper solution to make uh, the process of checking the proof of address document more smooth and, and faster. And as Richard mentioned, uh, we are working towards activating and obtaining licenses in different jurisdictions, such as OTF in Switzerland, uh, CIF license in Cyprus, etc. And from the KYC perspective, we're adjusting our KYC framework uh, to be compliant with these regulations uh, by adding new components, such as uh, video interview for, for the OTF license in Switzerland, and uh, as well as uh, uh, Certain certain blocks for the C license in Cyprus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, next question: um, Is Lique ready to make the big announcement, the one that will get the intention of the investor, but also those which are going to make LKK strong again? I've invested into LKK one year before before about eight months. I do believe in Lique. I have instead because I like your roadmap and ID. I'll hope the best for all of us. Richard? So thank you. Unfortunately, it's not about big announcements. It's really just delivery, hands-on work, and actually, you know, kind of convincing people by not hot words, but real excellent work. So key is just to get our team professionalized and get everything to tick smoothly. So then we'll be all 
spoiled with higher prices. But first, there's work. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next question is related to liquidity. Uh, what is Lique's plan to increase trading volume in the exchange in the short term? Yes, so happy to answer this. Two pronged strategy. One, attract other liquidity providers to come and provide liquidity. And this is actually why we also have this incentive scheme of paying commissions, but also rewarding people who introduce to us people who trade actively. So it's not just a cheap scam, it's part of the strategy of building a network. This has to be understood. At uh, the second side, we have the alpha engine and the alpha engine is deployed as a kind of hedging tool which allows us to make markets with very tight spreads and in relation to that we'll be launching investment products based on that to be it alone or together with partnerships thanks thank you next question is also related to liquidity specifically to new content new token why liquidity wasn't a primary concern when Liki listed the new token? This has to be addressed immediately. Also for you, Richard. I agree, liquidity is key. But just to get tokens listed, there are so many tokens. And clearly, we would like to have the most liquid tokens on our exchange. But this is a very big task. So to break down the tasks into manageable steps, just start listing. And as it happens, we'll start to provide liquidity. But it's unfortunately a two-step process, which requires a lot of patience on your side and obviously also for us who have to do the work. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next question is for Nisha. Coinprints, Coinprints is shutting down. What does it mean for LKK and LKK one year? What's the ETA for the LKK and LKK one year to be fully RSK20 token? And also, do you think to use RSK.co uh, like Civic wants to do in order to do the switch? Uh, actually, yes. Uh, we, uh, we plan to migrate LKK and LKK one year to uh, ERC20. And uh, I currently can say that uh, several models are considered uh, how it will be managed. Uh, so I think details will be provided later. Thank you. Uh, next question is for Sergey. Sergey, what do you think about reviewing Lique's current model for merging trading and make it more open and progressive? Bitfinex is a good example. They have more or less transparent lending market for merging trading. So whenever someone has spare money, they can lend out this capital for those who want to trade on margin. And then risky trader can take leverage trades with borrowed capi capital. Lending rate and our market driven both bid and ask side can set their own lending and borrowing percentage yeah actually yes so we seriously explore the bitfinex and you know other uh, cryptocurrency exchange model for the margin trading and we actually had it in our roadmap to integrate the the lending market and uh, and that actually people will be able to trade on the spot market with the leverage uh the there is a pros and cons to this model and uh, one of the biggest kind of con is that we currently i mean modern trading is is regulated activity so we provide liquidity uh, sorry we provide this this service under the under, under the license and we currently have a license which allows to operate in you know in uh, some of the countries and our current model is is designed to suit the regulation and compliance requirements for this uh, so most likely we'll keep it for regulated entities and uh, this actually this model is, is, is it is quite profitable but uh, we explore the other opportunities and uh, to I mean to create a lending market as well and uh, merge the two together thank you um, what are the first results of leak new strategy can you blog about those milestones in a clear way with clearly stated ETAs instead of posting generic posts like Lique 2.0 piece. And it's for Richard. Agreed. I would love to you know, kind of get into a mode where we have weekly calls, just say this is delivered in the next two weeks and have you know, kind of a scrum-based methodology. Now, next two months is just putting our heads down, solve the core pieces, and then as of May, you know, have 
these more regular deliverables, which are clearly tangible. So we're just in the mode of putting our heads down, get the core fixed. But this is why we have the AMA to try to explain to you the bigger picture and also the concrete steps that we're taking. Thanks. Thank you. Um, when is when will the alpha engine be ready and how will it help with liquidity? So as we're speaking, the alpha engine is deployed, has been initially set up for the look at uh, LKK and now is being, as we speak, being launched for Ethereum crosses. The full power of the alpha engine will only be seen when it's together with offering narrow quotes and using the alpha engine as a hedging tool and whenever our inventory exceeds a certain threshold do an offsetting hedging trade so it's i expect you as an end user will see a massive a very significant change within six weeks so six weeks is the timeline which you have to wait for seeing major changes thank, thank you um Next question. How come did Lique list fiat, pair, fiat pairs like time uh, Swiss franc, but is not allowed to do it with, ERC tw with other ERC20 token? Is it because of different regulation? Yeah, uh, I can answer this question actually. So we list time, uh, one of our first token to, to be listed on, on, on Lique. It Actually, it was listed well before the, before the regulators were actually speaking up and the regulations were not clearly defined so we we listed it on Liki and uh, uh and make the crosses to the fiat available essentially time token is now going through also changes and they are changing now their white paper uh, and vote uh, that they will change that it clearly falls into the utility token classification so most likely we'll make a new listings uh, after this uh, and so as currently as you know we list all utility tokens under Liki netherlands entity where the they, they are not regulated and we can uh, uh, compliantly list them, but they only trade it to the, to the other crypto, so to Bitcoin and Ethers, uh, but currently not to Fiat. Thank you. Um, okay, next question. How far has Lique progress covering offers, covering offer for institutional, institutional customer? How much will you focus on these in the next two years? Is high frequency trading for institutional customers still on the short term roadmap? Thank you for everything. Really enjoying the service right now. So, clearly, institutional service is key for us and for all the users of the Luca Exchange. It is actually happening in steps. So, the first stage is to make our, through the API, accessible to market makers, and these are typically institutionals. Second, long term, is to open and create investment products where institutions can invest. And there is a big potential. But again, this takes time. And my conjecture, which I think is important to understand, is that the retail product is actually the foundation for institutional products on top. So by focusing first on institutional uh, in retail products, but keeping in mind the institutional market, we have the right setup to scale up for the institution. But so this just takes a bit of time. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is for, is for Misha. Is there any change that you implement the native and important coin in Liki Exchange and establish fiat trading pairs with these coins? Would it be that the strong community of this coin would advertise it in an authentic way and the market of Liki would increase in a natural way? Yes, uh, sure. Uh, actually, uh, I don't think it's so much based and more. Misha, you're muted. Sorry, we don't hear you, Misha. Oops, sorry. Uh, actually, a uh, number of uh, uh, blockchains are in, in pipeline. Uh, Ethereum Classic is soft launched today, and more. Cryptos are coming. So recently, we launched the series of contents uh, uh, for blockchain integration IP, API and got the number of submissions, which I think uh, it's a really success for our um, Liki Streams platform. So thank, thanks for our, thank you for, for delivery. I mean, for our community. 
And now we are working hard to test and deploy the provided APIs. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, next question is for you, Sergey. Will the exchange support short orders? Well, uh, first of all, I mean, currently the exchange is spot, so you are only able to convert one asset to another one. Like it's like a spot exchange, so it's uh, there is no uh, position opening there. But uh, uh, the users are able to to use the margin trading, and of course, it's limited to the countries uh, subject to availability. But they can use the margin trading to to open the short positions on on Bitcoin pairs and and FX in in, the, in this margin trading tool. Thank you. Uh, next question. Um, it's also for you, Sergey. Will you allow login and create an account on Liki services using civic.com? Civic yeah, actually, yes. We have partnered with Civic in, in summer following their ICO, and we uh, we plan to uh, create this kind of fast login button on, on our uh, uh, app. We're still waiting for the mobile SDK from, from civic.com to be integrated. So following the progress, we uh, we plan to do it. Thank you very much. Um, next question. Um, lately, there's a lot of positive development around Lique, especially with the addition of new crypto and token. But problem is there still there still seems to be volume to be low volume, and LKK share doesn't seem to reflect positive development. Robinhood is getting all of the positive P PR. Why isn't getting isn't Liki more successful in gaining user publicity? How will Liki stabilize its LKK price? So happy to answer this. So this is part of the kind of reorganization which we're doing is to get a marketing focus and kind of outreach to the community at large, which is more product focused and therefore have a closer in interaction with the community, which ultimately spreads the word. And if you refer to Robinhood, I mean, it's clear they have just started a lot earlier. So it will take us time to catch up. And it's all about focus. And this is what we're trying to do at the moment. Thanks. Thank you. Next question. Um, Goldman Sachs just acquired Poloniex for, 40, for 400 million. Is there a concern at Lique that Lique could be controlled by some entities buying 51% of the circulating coin and shares for only 19 million. At some point, the user base IP and licenses are going to make us a target for those who can see past the comparatively low daily transaction. This Goldman Sachs circle thing reminded me immediately at Lique's and its ambition. Maybe it's something Richard discussed when he was presenting at the Goldman Sachs FinTech in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. So it's just obvious what's happening. I mean, it's clear the big players understand this uh, potential of the market. There is a rapid turnaround. I can assure you that I'm not in for that. I'm focused on the long-term mission plan, which we have is to democratize markets and to create the alliance partnerships, which are necessary. But that means to succeed, we have to focus on the core. And this is all about creating an agile company. So super positive and tell you that I will not give up on the mission and therefore happy that I have a strong stake in the company. Thanks. Thank you. Last question. Um, will you revamp the investor page so it's always up to date and provide more transparency like circulating LKK one year, LKK two year, and number of forward settlements? It would be nice to see that and to be able to request uh, the number of circulating LKK by future dates. And it's for you, Sergey. Actually, thanks very much for this suggestion. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a good uh, idea. So we'll make this improvement on our website. OK, so that wasn't actually the last question. The next one will be the last question of the Ask Me Anything. And again, we will cover the remaining one in a blog post. And most likely, we will also include the one we covered uh, in the YouTube to make sure that everyone you know, can have access to the answer without having to watch a one hour video. So next question. What happened to modern money? No communication for weeks. And it's for you, Richard. Uh, 
actually there. It's part of our long-term strategy is to enable white label partners to kind of use our wallet. And that's the modern wallet is basically the template, but it's just part of our organization that we have not reorganization that we have not been able to push all products at the same time and to create priorities. So yes, you'll see a reappearance of that happening. And we have actually a first bank from Switzerland, which wants to sign up to have its own wallet for its customers. Thanks. Thank you very much. So this marks the end of the Ask Me Anything on YouTube. Thank you everyone for joining us. We will share the link of this video on our social media. And uh, as soon as possible, we will, share it. we will also share a blog post with all of the questions and answered. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Thanks.